Let me read to you a passage from the 16th chapter of St. John's Gospel, verses 16 to 20. It's the Gospel for Thursday after the sixth Sunday of Easter. St. John writes, Jesus said to his disciples, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me. Some of his disciples said to one another, What does he mean by saying, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me, and because I am going to the Father? They kept asking, What does he mean by a little while? We don't understand what he is saying. Jesus saw that they wanted to ask him about this, so he said to them, Are you asking one another what I meant when I said, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me? I tell you the truth, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. That's from John chapter 16, verse 16 to 20. Our Lord refers to our seeing him. There are many things of great importance to us which we take for granted. One is the place occupied in our lives by sight, especially the sight of things or persons we are fond of. There was once a television report of a government policy to assist the elderly and infirm in being able to remain at home rather than having to go into nursing homes. It showed one elderly gentleman who hated the thought of having to leave his home, full as it was of his books, his memorabilia and other things such as his beloved dog. He said that he wanted to be able every day to see all these things. They constituted his life to that point and it would have made his life very difficult if he were not able to see them around him. Much more is this the case with persons we love. We long to see them. A father and husband is away on military duty and he longs to be able to see his wife and children and they long to see him. It is a high point when he returns and they see one another again. All this is very human and we discover that it has an important place in revealed religion. In the prologue of St. John's Gospel, the Word of God is described as the light of men. The light is the life of men. Light enables a person to see. And there is no doubt that a person who is bereft of light is in a serious condition. Indeed, it can be life-threatening. Normally, light is necessary to gain one's livelihood. The Word of God is the light of men, bringing them life. This light was coming into the world, and, John tells us, we have beheld his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father. John chapter 1 verse 14. In the prologue of St. John, the sight of the glory of the Word made flesh, of him who is the only Son of the Father, is the high point of the story. The prologue is an overview and an introduction to what is coming, and the sight of the word become flesh is at its centre. No one has ever seen God, but in seeing the Son we come to know the God who sent him. Chapter 1 verse 18. The point is continued immediately after the prologue. John the Baptist sees Jesus, and he tells others to look on him. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. He says, chapter 1, verse 29. And the next day, John tells his disciples to look on the Lamb of God. And with that, two of them leave him for Jesus. We read that they follow Jesus, and at his invitation, they came and saw where he stayed. Chapter 1, verse 35 to 39. When Philip met Nathanael, he invited him to come and see Jesus. And when he did so, Christ promised Nathanael that he would see great things, greater things, and that he would see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Let us take all this as something of an introduction to the Gospel passage I read earlier 
in which our Lord promises his disciples that they would see him again. Jesus said to his disciples, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me. John chapter 16, verse 16 to 20. The high point is to see Jesus. The principal loss is not to see him, and the new height will be to see him again. The disciples could not understand what our Lord was referring to. We read, some of his disciples said to one another, what does he mean by saying, in a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me, and because I am going to the Father. They kept asking, what does he mean by a little while? We don't understand what he is saying. There are many evidences in the Gospels of their failure to understand and accept his warnings that he would be rejected, put to death, and then rise again. Our Lord is repeating this point, obviously. They would soon see him risen from the dead. Doubtless, he was also referring to his invisible presence in the church by the power of the Holy Spirit following Pentecost. He would be with them then. Our Lord is fond of analogies, and when he speaks of those who love him and keep his word, his promise to them clearly includes their seeing him. He who has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. John chapter 14 verse 21. So Christ will manifest himself to the one who keeps his word. This is a most important way in which the one who believes in Christ will see him. Christ proceeds to stress this point. If a man loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. John chapter 14 verse 23. In this way too, we see Jesus and the father by the power of the Holy Spirit. By the indwelling of the Holy Trinity within our hearts by grace, we are able to gaze with the eyes of faith on the Lord God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Of course, the faithful Christian will see Jesus at the end, when life reaches its end and he is judged worthy of a place in the other world. He will see Jesus when he comes again at the very end to judge all the living and the dead. The aim of all existence is to see Jesus and to be with him forever. The aim of life is to know, love and serve God in this life so as to see and enjoy him forever in heaven. When Christ promises that his disciples will see him again, he is speaking of the immediate future following his resurrection from the dead, but he is also speaking of the aim and climax of all of life and existence. Let us keep this great goal before us of seeing Jesus and being with him forever.